Hi guys, hope wherever you are and whatever you've been doing, you've had a sensational day. Well, I'm sure we would all agree that getting kids to eat their veggies has been the bane of existence for parents for eons. But with everything that's going on at the moment, this really is something that not only A, children need to be doing to be able to keep their little growing bodies healthy and strong, and especially as we're heading into the winter um, months and the dreaded colds, viruses and flus, um, are sort of going to become a lot more popular um, and of course to keep away from this dreaded coronavirus but two we really need kids to understand why they're eating veggies and why they're so important so on that topic if we think about it logically you know we all tend to grasp reasoning best when we are given some context as to why now if we understand the details of why we're asked to do something it helps us adults and children, of course, to better understand it. So when we can actually digest information um, through rational thinking, it sort of helps us understand A, our feelings, um, how we feel about it, and not just that, but what's our response to that particular question or situation. So at the end of the day, look, we all just want our kids to eat their veggies and we all agree with that. <laughs> um, but experts really recommend that when we communicate to our kids in the right uh, tone of voice, uh, in a way that their little hearts and minds understand, um, we are more likely to achieve a positive outcome than yelling and screaming at them. And what the key message we really want to communicate and have our kids understand that food is medicine and thankfully for us we are joined today by our very special guest and a beautiful fresh face that we haven't actually had in an interview yet and for the first time today Claire Zhivanovic and Claire's going to help us work out how we can do just this. Now Claire is a qualified naturopath, nutritionist and medical herbalist whose expert knowledge has earned her place on TV, podcasts and in best-selling health magazines. Now, Claire has recently published a fun children's nutrition book called Superfood Attitude. Now, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Rach, and hello to everyone who's watching. Yeah, we're super excited to have you. And uh, to get started, we published your article titled, Do Your Kids Realise Food Is Medicine? So for somebody watching that maybe hasn't had a chance to, to read the article, could you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just what inspired you to write it? Sure. Well, the article essentially is about encouraging your kids to recognise and understand that food is medicine. Um, I could say that what inspired me to write it is the coronavirus and wanting everyone to be as healthy and as happy as they can be. And it was partly that. But honestly, I have been passionate about food as medicine way back when I started studying. And I was thinking about this morning, I remember my first food as medicine class was back in 1999. And that was when the class was, people were going, is this really a class we should be teaching? Is this really a subject? And now it's like, yeah, people, this is a subject. This is why we need to understand it. So the article was inspired by all of that, really. Um, and it, it goes through helping to understand helping your kids understand why food is medicine, but also it touches on just a few examples you can start giving your kids uh, to help make it more um, relevant, understandable for them as well. That, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> and, you know, I, I guess with our lifestyles being so busy and hectic and the pace of life, um, one thing um, is becoming a little more evident at the moment is this coronavirus is making us slow down a little bit more um, through either home isolation and, and everything else. And I think um, on the flip side, with our busy lifestyles, we a lot of the time just look at food as um, fuel more so than anything else. Um, you know, in Australia, we do sort of live a lot more healthy lifestyles than other countries um, around the globe. We are a lot more sort of uh, health conscious because we've got the, um, you know, the climate that allows us to be outside and all those types of things. We are very sports orientated. So more so than other countries, definitely we are a bit more focused. However, still we are, you know, crazy busy. We work a lot more hours than, um, you know, other people in other countries. So I think for mm. the large majority of us, we know this conceptually, but we actually, we don't put it into practice. Is, that, is this what your, your thoughts are? 100% and the best example I can give you of that and I'm so glad you brought this up 
is because if people were truly embracing and embodying the fact that food is medicine, they would not be going out and stockpiling toilet paper. They would be going to the produce section and going, oh my God, I need so many pineapples and oranges and apples. And I'm glad that you're resonating with this because I just don't get it. I understand we all need toilet paper. I was shopping this morning and I couldn't get any. <laughs> and <I want> some. <laughs> However, um, the point is that's coming from a fear mentality as well, which isn't helpful. Yeah. Knowing that food is medicine is the opposite of that. It's empowering. And it's, there's never been a situation that I have lived through where there's been um, something that highlights the fact that food is medicine needs to be understood, but it's not yet being implemented in the way that it certainly could be. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. And I, I do yeah. think exactly as you said, and I've thought exactly the same thing, that why have families not gone into a supermarket and gone straight to the fresh food? Um, like sort of department, yeah. be able to get the, the, the one th the things that are going to help boost their immune system and give them a, a better chance at sort of keeping their bodies fit and healthy. Um, <laughs> uh, Exactly. And what they've done is completely the opposite. So it is maybe something that for the wider majority that we do need to have communicated to us and to understand a little bit more. So really, really excited to be having this chat with you. Um, we've got three key questions, but I just wanted to take one part out of your article, which I found really, really um, wonderful. I just wanted to read it out to everyone. Um, so I'm just going to read it out now. So at this un unprecedented time when health is at the forefront of everyone's minds. There's never been a better opportunity for people of all ages to discover how food can be used as medicine. It's especially valuable to expose to children to this wisdom now during this time of crisis as it can help. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on this paragraph? Because I thought it was really, really powerful. Yeah, sure. Um, well, as you said, it is, it is, or as I said, it's an unprecedented time. And it's, it's really the best opportunity uh, to educate people of all ages um, about their health, about their, their well-being. There's, it's, if there's something positive we can take from this experience, it's expanding our knowledge, it's expanding our ability to take responsibility for our well-being that's something that i'm really really passionate about because i believe the more self-empowered we are the happier we are the more self-empowered we are as a planet the happier the planet is happy all the people are and maybe happier maybe the earth will be happier as well <laughs> i don't know but but it's about self-empowerment yeah essentially well, I think the planet is a lot healthier and happy at the moment. We've seen um, with the pollution that's been decreased over the likes of China, over the likes of Northern Italy. We've just seen in the, the canals through Venice, that there's dolphins um, turning yes. into canals. So <laughs> it's definitely Mother Earth's way of maybe, heaven knows why these things are happening. There's so many different conspiracy theories as to why this virus is yeah. um, in our lives at the moment. But one thing is definitely for yeah. sure is the fact that it's giving the the earth and mother earth a chance to re replenish a little bit and, and, and breathe um that's for sure but um, one definitely. thing i definitely know for sure is that um as a human race that we all grow um, our biggest growth spurts are in times of hardship um, and i do think mm -hmm. that this is a chance that is making all of us look at our health um how we treat our mm -hmm. bodies and ensuring that we are fit and healthy and it definitely is an opportunity for growth on all, on all levels that everyone can definitely take something from from this hardship that we're going through so i'm really excited to start this chat so let's mm -hmm. get stuck into question number one question number one why can why can some foods act as medicine well I guess we really need to consider what medicine is and if we look at the definition of medicine it is to promote or maintain health and well-being and when we eat healthy foods like fruits vegetables um, whole grains legumes nuts seeds etc what they do is they promote or maintain health and well-being therefore acting as medicine and if we look inside, well, we can't look inside. That's the point. It's all the invisible, visible special powers that live inside these foods, the vitamins and minerals, the amino acids, the enzymes, the plant chemicals, all of those beautiful things that work together just like magic to boost, help, maintain, <laughs> promote our health 
and well-being act as medicine. Um, it's it all comes back to, to what the word, the word medicine means, and and the reason why we eat food is is as you said before, to to feed our body. Yeah, um, and and from some of the conversations I've had recently on this topic, um, I've had another dietitian sort of say, well, you know. Our, our immune health is something that is built up over time. It's not that we're going to expect that we're going to, within the next week, start eating healthy and all of a sudden we're going to be immune to this virus and all. It, it, that's an impossibility and we know that. Um, and as you just mentioned before, medicine is something that we need to be able to... to well, ideally, medicine is to prevent something. Or, or, or what, what are you trying to say? Medicine is to prevent things from happening or medicine is something that... I'm just trying to get the, the definition of, of how you're, you're defining medicine. Because I'm thinking medicine is something that we have when we're already sick. Is that it? Um, yeah, and I think that... Up. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's how most of us look at it. But I think if we're able to expand our definition of medicine, even using the word... Replacing the word medicine with medicinal going, okay, well, this um, apple that I'm eating is medicinal because it has all these healthy elements in it that are going to make me, make my body feel stronger. Now, whether that be to prevent or whether that be to treat something, same thing. You still need the medicinal properties for the body to do what it needs to do, <laughs> to recognise that, oh, there's an infection there and we need to send all our little soldiers over there and start defending against that as best we can. Or same thing if you break your bone, you still need medicinal elements in your diet to heal the fracture or the break, whatever it is. Yeah. And I understand 80% um, of our immunity is in our gut health. Um, and then so taking mm. our gut health to a place where we can sort of have um, a strong immunity long-term is something that we need to be doing continually to be able to um, ensure that this is not just a quick fix immunity and um, health is something that's built up over time as well. So this is something that we need to be doing on a continuing basis, would you say? 100%. And I've, I've been thinking for the last week or so as this has been happening that the majority of people are going to come out of this healthier because I believe they're going to look to what their body actually needs and go, oh, actually maybe should start eating healthier now because it'll make my immune system stronger. Or maybe I should change what I'm doing in my life here so that, so that I do feel better. And I do believe in the long term, we can all, we can all feel better from this thing that currently is, is scaring the pants off a lot of people, unfortunately. But, well, but well, completely well. understandably. Yeah. Well, put it definitely. I think this this is the, the first time in our generations, <laughs> um, definitely that everyone collectively has been more concerned about the health and well being of everyone in their, their their circle, their friends, their family, um, collectively. So yes, we are. And as we said earlier, we, we grow through um, through tough times. But um, let's get definitely. stuck with question number two. How can telling kids mm. about food as medicine help during during these un un pre Sedented times. Sorry, I need coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> I have my tea here. <laughs> um, well, it's all about, as you said before, taking the opportunity that's in this situation to empower ourselves. So let's think about it. We naturally eat food every day. We naturally want to eat food. It's something that we enjoy. And usually it's something, well, it's something that we enjoy, but we need to understand that it's not something that just uh, fills our belly or something that gives us the pleasure. It's something that gives us the vitamins and minerals, all the elements to help us thrive and survive and heal and grow and all these kind of things. And it's really about educating kids at this time. It helps give them a sense of control because it's a very much it's very much a time where most of us feel out of control. So if we can inform our kids that food is medicine, what they are choosing to put inside their mouth is impacting how their body reacts to this situation. It's making their immune system stronger. Then they have a greater sense of control in the situation. Uh, well, yeah, essentially educating your kids at this time 
about food as medicine, although of course I believe it's always important, is it's going to decrease their stress levels, decrease anxiety, decrease feelings of helplessness as well. It's also going to boost um, their sense of calm, their confidence, their um, self-reliance and their sense of self-empowerment as well, even though that they probably have no idea what self-empowerment is. And what that will do, it, was, it will bring in a greater sense of peace for the little ones and for the adults as well who are, who are stressed in this time um, to help us get through this time um, just feeling a little bit more okay. But in the long term, it's going to obviously the benefits are long lasting because they're going to understand how using food as medicine can help them grow as they become adults and through the rest of their lives. So <clears throat> using this opportunity now is amazing. Let's, let's start educating them because it's going to take them through till the end when they move, when everyone moves on to whatever is, is next. It's a lifelong journey. Yep. And it's, it's wonderful when you think of, um, the opportunities that it's not just going to be well, understanding that fresh fruit and vegetables are, are paramount, but that maybe times and circumstances when we're not going to be able to necessarily get all the fruit and veggies that we're used to. So educating them about mm. value in all kinds of different food groups that we're maybe not so used exactly. to eating. And as you're saying, like lentils and couscous and all the different yeah. things that maybe um, are a little bit outside their, their palate, um, giving them the opportunity to really try lots of new foods um, because of what's available and, um, and ensuring that we are continually educating them. So what, what are your thoughts on that? That I 100% agree. <laughs> and that pretty much if you, you can pick up any fruit or any vegetable and tell your child that it is medicinal in some way and you will be correct. You can, there will be multiple opportunities throughout the day to pick up a food that you're eating or that you're walking past in the shops that may be lentils, that may be nuts, uh, the list goes on, to, to remind them that this has medicinal properties as well, that this might boost your immune system, that this might help your, help your bones be stronger. And don't freak out if you don't know what those medicinal properties are right now because the information is out there and what you need will always come to you. And you can always research it. There is so much out there these days. And honestly, it's why I wrote my book. <laughs> I'm not trying to just plug it, but it's why I wrote the book. Because what I found is that parents often don't know how these healthy foods impact the body. And the, the feedback that I've got is that the parents love learning along with the children. Just go, oh. I didn't know that a banana was going to do that. I didn't know that a watermelon was going to do that for me. And so they're having those aha moments all at once. Yep. So the, the information and the opportunities are all around you. You cannot go wrong. And what a great lesson too that um, for any parents, you know, with children at home, they're possibly needing to, to um, self-educate as well. This is a great opportunity to use this as one of the lessons possibly as well, would you say? Yeah, I've had, a, I've had a number of parents already start doing that and, and not only has it been a good learning experience, it, it's been a great way for them to pass time <laughs> and feel like they're not really educating uh, because there's, there's fun ways to educate and then there's other things, other ways to educate that aren't as fun, which they might be touching on at the moment as well. So it, it takes a bit of a lighthearted approach to it at the moment. And have you seen um, with your practice that you've seen a change in the types of inquiries that are coming through from families um, with the recent sort of um, spread and everything else that's happening at the moment? Have you seen a shift in different types of inquiries and, and concerns at all? It's, it's, all, it's, it's almost all immune-based. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone wants to know how to protect themselves. Um, and on the flip side, there's also a lot of people who are very fearful, which is fair enough, who are choosing to not go out into the world and see a practitioner at the same time. So there's a lot of cancellations going on for uh, many um, practitioners, whether it's doctors or natural therapists, because people don't want to go, okay, well, that's not a health, health, not a healthy place for me to be right now, which is fine because there's a lot of people um, there. Um, and you have options. There are, there are online consults that a lot of people are doing. But yeah, it, definitely you would say that 
95, 99% of, of the information that you talk about at the moment is, is immune system based. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Let's get stuck into question number three. Uh, what are three medicinal foods you can recommend parents tell their children about? Okay, well, as I said before, you can start by telling your kids that all fruits and vegetables have medicine in them <laughs> for different reasons and you cannot go wrong. Um, but if I had to choose just three, mm -hmm. um, at this point in time, we're going to have to talk about garlic because garlic is so amazing for your immune system. It seems basic, but not everyone knows this. Um, so you can tell your children that garlic is medicine for colds and flus and even viruses as well. In garlic, there is a, um, a chemical called allicin, which is such a powerful antibiotic, natural antibiotic, um, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, which really knows how to boost your immune system and help those a little armies inside of you to be on alert as best they possibly can. So at this point in time, it's got to be garlic as, as, as much as you can get your kids to eat it. I know it's, it, it, it can be hit or miss. <laughs> um, the second food I'd have to say is cucumbers. And yeah, that's because cucumbers contain such an amazing amount of living water. And the living water helps, if we're talking about context now, at this point in time, say you had a fever, the cucumbers, specifically fresh cucumber juice, helps to cool the body, cool the organs, cool the glands, and regulate the system back to where it naturally wants to be. And another thing with cucumbers is because there's so many beautiful trace um, minerals in there, it's something that you can use quite lightheartedly. Say if your little one um, had some brittle nails and they want them to be stronger or their hair, they're like, oh, I want my hair to be longer. Okay, great opportunity. You say, well, did you know that cucumbers are medicine for your hair? Cucumbers are medicine for your nails because they will help your hair, skin and nails to be healthier and stronger. Awesome. Sounds like you didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. And um, I actually have cool. got really brittle nails. So I'm going to go make sure that when I go to the supermarket later on, hopefully, fingers crossed, there will be some, some cucumbers. So thank you for that. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm meant to be. <laughs> beautiful beautiful um, lesson there for kids as well. Lovely. Yes, definitely. Um, the third food uh, that I want to mention is pineapple. And mm. the reason is kids relate really well to this one. And that's because you can tell them that pineapple is medicine for bumps and bruises. So pineapple is uh, a beautiful uh, ground of vitamin C and a substance called bromelain. Together, the two of these um, work again, just like magic, to go, oh, there's a bruise that's happened just over there. We're going to scurry over here. And we're going to gobble up all the inflammation and we're going to uh, decrease the swelling and we're going to eat up all those red blood cells that are dead red blood cells that are causing the darkness in that bruise we're going to make it heal a whole lot quicker love it that's what pineapple does <laughs> but pineapple will also uh boost your immune system as well because of the vitamin c so again something awesome to use at the moment however oh you have a question question miss um is yes tint pineapple just as um as good as fresh pineapple that was my however the answer is no <laughs> very good question um the reason is you need the core of the pineapple that thick bit um because that's where most of the bromelain that active substance and the majority of the vitamin c live and obviously canned pineapple that's been tossed out so I know a lot of people don't like eating the core of the pineapple and they cut it out, whether that's what you're used to or you don't like it for whatever reason. Um, a great alternative is to juice your pineapple because then you're having all of it <laughs> and you don't need to think about whether the core is there or not. So wonderful question. <laughs> Cool. Um, they're my three they're my three top although I could go on for probably another half an hour but we will not do that <laughs> well, in the article you do mention um, that watermelon is um, medicine for, for our lungs which um, if you've got two seconds I'd love to know a little bit more of that and then also just about bananas which you mentioned in the article also that uh, bananas are medicine for your energy but if you could start with watermelon that would be awesome sure um, so watermelon is let's 
look at watermelon look at the color it's pink it's pink because there's special substances in there which i have trouble pronouncing uh, such as zeanthin and other tongue twisters as well as vitamin a um, vitamin c there's so many nutrients in that beautiful juicy watermelon that your lung tissue just thrives on so if there are any are any lung tissue conditions around and you obviously don't have an allergy to watermelon it's super beneficial to include in your diet on a regular basis even if it's watermelon juice whatever eat it juice it all good <laughs> wow that, that's that's incredible i never knew that but watermelon is medicine for your lungs awesome <laughs> excellent <laughs> um bananas a lot of people know that bananas will give you energy um the reason is uh it's so full of potassium uh which every cell in your body needs to function so bananas help to wake up all the cells in your body and it also helps to feed the muscles so that when you are tired you have more energy to go okay all right i don't feel as lethargic now to get up and maybe if you're a kid i want to play or whatever it is it just gives you that spark of energy it, it helps um all the glucose coming from the banana as well the the good sugar don't be scared about fruit sugars that's a whole nother topic but that as well of course that combined with with the potassium and, and the other good minerals that's where that spark of energy that's where that spark of medicine which helps to promote and maintain health and well-being comes from <laughs> And and bonus one, which I just want to just, which is also in your article, which um, I is in, a lesson for the day for me also. That time is medicine for a sore throat. Really, that's awesome. Yes, really, yes. Um, I, honestly, I don't have a sore throat, but in here at the moment, I have a mixture of tea, one of of herbs from the garden. One of them is thyme, because thyme is not just um, amazing for a sore throat because Time is a very potent antiviral. Um, it's honestly one of the strongest germ killers in nature that you're going to find. And a lot of um, the hospital grade um, medicines, but cleaners um, out there come from a substance called thymol, which is extracted from thyme because thyme is so amazing. <laughs> um, so thyme will boost your immune system. 100 percent if if you have time in your garden i highly recommend that you um make a time tea what i do at the moment on the stove i get a big saucepan and i put in about four or five sprigs of thyme depending upon what else you've got i've got lemon barn growing so i throw that in there and i just boil it up until it's um it becomes dark in color about half an hour to an hour and you've got a, a big load of tea that you can distribute to your whole family if you're just putting that in your water bottle, even if you're mixing it with half half tea, half water, sip on it throughout the day. If you feel like, oh, maybe I feel a little bit unwell, have more, have three cups. Just sip on it all day if you want. For me, it's something that makes me feel more calm and I'm being proactive. I've got my time tea, even though I feel fine. That's why I feel fine. <laughs> um, can't speak highly enough. If you've got time in the garden, you are already ahead. Congratulations to you. <laughs> and, and do you cover a lot more stuff um, like this in your book? Yes, because the book is A to Z. So there's 26 in there. Sensation. Very, very, very basic understanding um, for kids. I don't go into the why as such because the book is, is aimed at two to seven-year-olds, but it's very much about understanding, for example, that pineapples will aid your bumps and your bruises and that avocados are good for your skin. It's it's planting the concept in there so that as they grow they can elaborate on that if you want if, if you wanted more information about that there is um i created a free educational resource which goes into the why but the book itself let's start with the basics and go from there that's what i thought that's sensational well we will have a link through to the article that we've published for you and for everyone um watching just to, to highlight, so um, we have some information in there about that bananas are a medicine for your energy, garlic is medicine for colds and flus, yay. Uh, pineapple is medi <laughs> medicine for bruises, thyme is medicine for a sore throat, and watermelon is medicine for your lungs. All of these things are very, very important at the moment with what's going on. Um, but otherwise, um, if parents have got any other questions for you and or would love to access and buy a copy of your book, uh, whereabouts can they find you? 
Uh, I do have a website, superfoodattitude.com. You can always contact me through there. Um, I'm also on all the socials, Instagram and Facebook are the main ones um, under Superfood Attitude. Um, if you Google Superfood Attitude, you'll come up with an abundance of stores to buy it as well. So, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I am very happy to help always. Man. Awesome. I've loved our chat today, Claire. Can't wait to speak with you again. And um, once thank again, you. thank you for the articles. I think it's fantastic and definitely got lots of, lots of in information that adults and children alike definitely can learn from. So, yes, wonderful. Take care and we'll speak to you soon. Thank, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>